Okay, cats, what's happening? If you have uh, made the trek to Sturgis this year and you're on your way home, I hope you have a safe journey. It's about midweek here, so I see that some people are on their way home already. Uh, I don't know how many people actually arrived there, like midweek. I think a lot of the people arrived either Friday or over the weekend, and some of them only stayed three or four days, and then they hit the road back home. Uh, when, I, when I went out there, I always spent the whole week out there. I figured, hey, I rode all the way out here. I'm going to take the time, and I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to relax, and I'm going to see everything that is to be seen out there. And uh, eh, that's kind of the way I did it. But yeah, a lot of people just make it short. Uh, maybe they got to go to work or, or whatever, but uh, whatever the case is. Well, as the old adage goes, what happens in Sturgis stays in Sturgis. Not so sure if that's going to be the fact this year. I guess we'll find out down the road. I thought I would catch you up on some of the uh, statistics of the rally this year. The Sturgis Rally ended up dr drawing quite a crowd this year. Uh, in fact, there's more bikers there than there are uh, the population of about 6,000 in Sturgis. So there's more bikers there than actual uh, residents of Sturgis, which is normal. Uh, the bikers pretty much take over the uh, town of Sturgis during the uh, biker rally. Now, uh, within the first 24 hours, the first day or so, uh, they were reporting there was 84 arrests, and most of those were either alcohol or drug-related. <clears throat> I couldn't imagine getting a DUI in South Dakota when you're out there on vacation. I mean, uh, what are the implications of that? I, I know DUI is very serious. You have a court appearance, you lose your driver's license for a period of time. There's a whole lot to go with it. And you get locked up. So they haul you to jail, and then you got to figure out how to, you know, you're in jail for, uh, oh, probably at least overnight anyways. Uh, but then there's usually a, uh, a mandatory uh, sentence that goes with that too. So... How that works when you're on vacation, what do you have to do, fly back to South Dakota to serve your time, to pay your dues in court, and, and all of the fines that go with that? Ah, terrible situation. 84 people. Uh, there was, I think, somewhere around 226 citations in the first uh, 24 hours, and those were like speeding tickets, uh, burnouts, things like that, uh, reckless operation, which wouldn't uh, involve an arrest, that just simply getting a, a traffic ticket. And then aside from all of that, uh, they were reporting there was 18 motorcycle crashes in the first 24 hours. It's like I said before, uh, there's a lot going out on out there. Uh, it's a party for the most part. So there could be a lot of intoxicated people on motorcycles. Aside from that, what I've seen is you get a lot of people out there that have very little experience in riding. You know, they may not ride any time during the year, but this Sturgis is their vacation and they take their motorcycles, some of them trailer out there. Uh, some of them may ride out there, but they're novice riders. So you get into the Black Hills, there's a lot of twisties, there's hills, there's curves, there's narrow roads, and a lot of traffic, a lot of motorcycle traffic. Um, it can be pretty hairy. And if you're not really, uh, used to that kind of riding it could be dangerous for you so uh yeah 18 accidents in the first 24 hours no fatalities just some some minor injuries thank goodness in fact if you'll watch one of uh scooter tramp scotty's last videos uh they were riding through the uh, hills and uh, one of his uh uh, co-workers, I guess one of the guys that works there at some of the vendor booths, 
uh, crashed his motorcycle, and he was lucky to have survived. It was right by a, a, a rock wall, or like a cliff, and there was big boulders laying along the berm there. His bike didn't fare too well. Uh, luckily, he didn't bend the frame or anything, but he messed up the front forks and the whole front, his, his lights were gone, uh, his cowling, some of the things were, were pretty messed up on his bike. So uh, they loaded the bike up and hauled it to the shop, but he was fine except for a few minor cuts and scratches and probably some bruises. They said he went to work the next day limping. So I guess that's a blessing that at least he's fine enough to go to work. Uh, but thank goodness he wasn't uh, seriously injured or, or killed. I'm sure that by the end of this rally, we'll see. It'll, uh, it'll be a miracle if there's no fatalities. It really will. So I haven't heard any of the more recent reports come out yet. That was just uh, uh, over the just one that came out over the weekend. So. Uh, that was all I had. Now, as far as the COVID goes, uh, South Dakota says that they really haven't had a problem in the Sturgis area with it. In fact, I think in that whole area, there's only been one uh, COVID-related death that was reported to date. Uh, their biggest problem was up in the north uh, eastern part of the state, I believe, where they had an outbreak of COVID. Uh, so, <clears throat> but here you're bringing people from all over the country, all over the world into the Sturgis area. So we'll see what happens. I'm pretty sure that you'll see a surge in, in COVID there after the rally. Now, one interesting thing that happened during the rally, and in fact, it's just been happening here recently, but there's a lot of native Indian reservations in South Dakota and, and around the Sturgis area. <clears throat> and those Indian reservations have been pretty clear of, of COVID. They haven't had any COVID illnesses to speak of at this point. And what they decided to do is close their borders. So any roads that went through an Indian reservation, they barricaded them. They, they don't want these bikers coming through, not even riding through their reservation. Uh, so they barricaded it off to the public, and they have a checkpoint, you know, if you're a native Indian and part of the reservation, you can come and go, but anyone else, there's no passing through. So I found that was interesting. Um, and, you know, each to their own. I, I mean, if they want to protect their community that way, uh, the native Indians have every right to do so. It's their land. Uh, it's their lives they're dealing with. And uh, they don't have to invite uh, that kind of a thing in. And, you know, they're not part of the Sturgis rally, really. Uh, they're just, they're trying to make a living and, and feed their families. And they don't want to bring this virus in. So they're smart enough to know that these people that are coming from all over the place are definitely going to bring the COVID with them. And uh, they just don't want it in their, their reservation. So... Uh, some of you uh, that have gone out there, like I said, uh, I hope you had a good time while you were there. I hope you enjoyed yourself. And I really pray that nobody comes down with the COVID. Uh, even though they're saying that there's like a 0.01% chance of fatality, you could still get pretty sick. And I, don't, I wouldn't like to see anybody get sick. Uh, we'll see what happens with this thing though. Um, but hopefully everybody makes it home safely. I think the rally is probably, even though it's middle of the week, it's probably starting to wind down a little bit. Uh, like I said, there's a good percentage of people that just showed up for the first weekend and then they're already on their way home or they're home already. Uh, I wish those a safe trip, a safe journey. I know it's a long journey for a lot of people. It's over 1,200 miles for me to ride to Sturgis. I always do it in two days. <clears throat> I ride, you know, some 600 or more miles if I can in a day. Uh, find a place to throw my tent. I like to camp at the state parks if I can. So depending on which route I take, I go across either I-80 or I-90. 
uh, 90 being the more, most northern route, but I-90 takes you right through Chicago, Illinois, and I, I refuse to go through Chicago, Illinois. Not one more time in my life will I go through Chicago, Illinois, if I can help it. So if I take uh, I-80, uh, I can hit the more southern route and just skirt around the bottom of Chicago and keep on going across and then I shoot straight up into like Sioux City, Sioux Falls, and right up into Sturgis that way. When and if I go again, I don't know. I hope I get to go to Sturgis again, but uh, right now we're dealing with other issues, so uh, we, we keep praying for my wife as she has a, a, a very serious upcoming surgical procedure. Uh, scheduled very soon so all in next week we're going to be tied up i'll try to get the videos out there and i keep you updated too give the video a thumbs up if you like if you haven't yet get on board and subscribe we'd like to have you with us leave your comments down below and uh, add your two cents worth if you got any new information we like to uh uh keep everybody posted and I appreciate you know we get a lot of good information from you guys and, and that's that's awesome well guys that's all I got for today I hope you have a good one and until next time fight hard